We are. We are. We are alive. Hey, we're alive. Okay. Jared's gonna do the introduction. Uh, hey, this is a stream for Project Spark. Um, we've got our community manager here. You want to introduce yourself? Michael Sco. Okay. My name's uh, Jared Greiner. I'm one of the designers on Project Spark. And uh, I'm Zach Lesnowski. What are you? Uh, I am also helping Mike with uh, <laughs> community. You don't, have a, you don't have a job title? Talk to your boss about that. Yeah, you should figure yeah, that out. That is interesting. Have you ever made a game? Uh, so I was told by these two guys that you guys want to see more complex things in our streams. So I should show you something more complex. So I got into an empty world here, but I, I don't have a character. I don't know what happened there. But uh, I wanted to show you guys something uh, for uh, third-person shooters that I've seen uh, some people kind of struggling with aiming, like writing the code to aim well in a first-person shooter. Yeah. So I want to I wanna show an example of how to do something to kind of make your aiming more accurate in a third-person shooter game. So I'm, I'm going to go... I'm gonna grab our typical third-person shooter brain and then add a few things to it. So right now, I'm assuming you're dealing with the issue, and I've seen this in a couple of our levels, popular levels actually, like uh, Cabal Wars or Sabal Wars and whatever, where when you shoot, you're not quite shooting at the center of the screen. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So with our default uh, third-person shooter brain, so this is just the, the standard one, you, uh, when you use the right stick, you turn the camera around, and then you shoot flat in the direction that the camera's pointing. Right. So like, if you want to shoot something higher up, you have to aim up. So let's modify this and give it ourselves a crosshair and a few other things to kind of uh, make it more like your, your expected first-person shooter. So let's display. Um, let's get a crosshair icon here. All right, I need the keyboard. Let's scoot up. <laughs> Did you know that, that on Xbox One you can enter text with the USB keyboard? Yeah, I do that all the time. I have a keyboard plugged into my Xbox One at my desk. Hmm. Uh, let's put this at the screen center, and then I want to make I want to give an offset to this uh, this camera. It looks like there's already one in, but it's only world up and forward. That's weird. I want to make it also offset to the right, so that our character is kind of off to the side of the screen. Directions. I think right will be what I want. We'll see. Yeah. All right. So that looks a little bit more expected. So you've got a crosshair in the middle of the screen. Your character off to the right. I still haven't changed where my character shoots. So he's still going to shoot flat all the time rather than actually shooting at what my crosshair is pointed at. So let's keep going another step then. Um, down to the shoot command, wherever that's at. Shoot crossbow bolt, and we're going to modify this to shoot in direction. And let's grab. So this is this is the as far as I've seen a lot of people get. Right. I've this is seen usually where I don't want to call it failure, but I want to say this is as complex as people usually end up. With. Yeah. So people get to this point where you shoot, kind of uh, in the direction the camera's pointed. So this lets you shoot like up and down, which is pretty cool. But uh, let's put a few more things in our world so that we can kind of see a little bit more specifically where th where this can be improved even further crates in here. I need to put them over here behind me so that the sun is hitting them and we can see them better. Right, of course. They need to be very pretty crates. Well, I just need to be able to see where the arrows are hitting. <laughs> okay. So now we've got a few crates in the world. So you'll see, like, I'm going to try and aim at something pretty precisely. So, like, if I aim at that bolt right there, if I aim at that little bolt on the crate, oh, well, this crate can be destroyed. I didn't expect that. Um, I also, I want to get, like, an impact effect so I can see a little bit better where my uh, crossbow bolts are hitting. Okay, you wanna um, make a... Yeah, so I'm gonna make a template arrow to shoot. Look at that, that's convenient, that I still had cross searched there. Um, so when, we'll make this when it bumps something. Play an effect. Some kind of little explosion or something. <laughs> what would you say the best way to instantiate an effect is on bump? I mean, the, I could go even further and make this even more precise in a moment here. We could do some ray casting between projectile positions to make sure we get like a really precise impact position. Right. Uh, but I, that, that's an even, even a step further than I'm quite ready to go. Right, right now. absolutely. No, I don't want to play, I want to play fireball impact, not the fireball. See, when you talk to me when I'm searching for things, oh, I I'm miss sorry. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, fireball impact. We'll just, we'll just make this really tiny though, so it looks like more of an arrow impact. 
Yeah, modifiers, and then we'll scale it down. Scale it down. You have any tiny numbers in here? Yeah, we got some tiny numbers. Some that'll really look, tiny that'll numbers. look all right. All right, we'll make this a template so that we can shoot it a bunch of times, make it kind of our cookie cutter to shoot a bunch of arrows from. So it's not actually an object that exists in the world, but it's something we can use from our brain here. Right, of course. So then this crossbow bow is pointing at the normal gallery one, but instead we're going to shoot this uh, special one that we've made here. And dang it, now all these crates, I want them to be invincible. So I'll go into their health and defenses and make them invulnerable so I can't destroy them quite as fast and I can still see what's going on. Okay. Oh, by the way, we're using uh, XSplit for a broadcasting program, if you're wondering. Highly mm -hmm. recommend. So, let's, let's take a look. Let's aim at one of these interesting. bolts. interesting. I've also got a little issue here with my camera. When I push the right stick up, it's like moving beyond the bounds of the camera, and then when I let go of the right stick, it's adjusting again. That's interesting. So, but if I aim at this bolt really specifically, like if I put the cross here right on the bolt there, right. well, that's really weird. That's really off. I'm shooting, am I just shooting flat again? No, no I'm shooting up and down. Yep, the offset is quite different from the camera at the moment. Yeah, so you'll notice uh, that my, my, my arrows are impacting in a pretty different position that I'm actually aiming. And you can fix that a bit if you move the camera closer to your character. But what's what's fundamentally off here is that you're shooting from not like a your camera position is not the same as your character position, which causes where your crosshair to appear to be quite different than what your character is pointing at. So let's uh, let's debug this a little bit and show you more specifically what's going what's happening here. That's pretty different. So I'm gonna do a couple things. Uh, I'm gonna show you what's going on with ray casting. So ray casting, if you don't know, is kind of like I, the, the simplest way to explain it that I've used is think of it as kind of a tripwire. So we're going to set up a tripwire um, going from the arrow position to its impact position okay. so that, and then draw that so you can kind of see it in the world. Uh, we're going to start at, uh, well, I guess I'm equipping, I'm equipping a, a crossbow up here. I want to make that a variable, so I'm going to go in so I can reference my crossbow later. So this just sets up that now the this crossbow variable will equal the crossbow that I equip so that I can use that later. And then that lets me raycast from the crossbow position. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go in direction, the same direction that we're shooting. So Camera. Yeah, so this will sh this will like kind of shoot out a tripwire from the crossbow position in the direction that the camera is facing. Right. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna make that so it draws. That's one of the other modifiers on that, so we can see the tripwire. Usually it's invisible, kind of like your trigger boxes or your detect spheres are invisible. This is kind of similar to that. Um, and then we're gonna create a little sphere, a tiny one, at the position that we impacted. So, so ray casting gives you a bunch of, of special outputs that are really useful. One of them being the hit position. So it's like when you shoot out this tripwire, where does it get hit something in the world? So we're going to draw a sphere there, and I'm going to make it a little bit tinier than normal. So I can put a little value on this, uh, make it smaller. Sure. So that'll be the radius of the sphere. It'll be 0.3 meters. All right, so then you can see here, this is what I'm actually targeting at, is where that sphere is at. And then you can see kind of the, the line drawing from my uh, crossbow out into the world. And you can see that there, it doesn't line up with the actual crosshair of my, that my, uh, my UI is showing me. And that's why I'm kind of, I'm missing. Actually, see, see there, that's why it's shooting kind of off to the side a good bit. Or if I shoot just up into space, it's pretty far off. So let's mod. So then, what I'm going to do, I want to account for that difference, and uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do another ray cast, but instead of going from the crossbow position, I'm going to go from the camera position. So get into our positioning, camera position. All right. So now I've got these two ray casts. I should probably draw the spheres in different colors, so that you can see that the difference between the two. So maybe maybe the one from the camera will be orange and the one from the crossbow will be blue. So you see this now you can see the orange sphere is right where I actually want to shoot. 
It's like out there in the world, right in the middle of my crosshair, and the blue one is is kind of off to the left. Incredibly hard to see, but definitely off to the left. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. The blue blue is really really not very bright. I wish that was brighter. Yeah. You can see it a little bit better in the dark, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I mean I'll go back and make that one white or something, so you guys can see that better. If it, yeah. Is there a white? Oh well, no, you just take it away. But it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that actually makes any difference. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. so the orange one is where I want to shoot, but the white the white one is where I'm actually shooting. So let's let's fix that. So, if we take this uh, this ray cast from camera position in direction camera forward, and we put that as a parent on our shoot rule, so we move the shoot as a condition of that, then instead of shooting in direction down here, we can shoot at a position. And then we just put that same hit position that we're drawing the orange sphere at as the position we're shooting at. And then this will uh, make us always shoot at our crosshair position. Look at that. There you go. So it's, uh, it's pretty simple. You kind of have to be aware of why that's happening. But this is just a really, really uh, kind of cool way to, uh, or a simple way to make sure your, your shooting is more accurate and your third person shooter's there. So. Hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Like I, I hope to see a couple levels that were maybe in a contest recently updated to make your aiming a little more accurate. I really enjoyed those levels, but this is one thing that kind of bugged me yeah. when, I, when I was playing them. So this, this should uh, everybody watches this should be able to do some uh, some cool stuff with third person shooters. I just want to walk through the brain one more time. We'll just kind of yeah. go through it line by line, and we'll kind of tell you guys what's going on. Here. Yeah. So at the start uh, here, just on the first uh, first kind of tick that this brain runs, we're gonna equip a crossbow. We don't and really need to debug that though, right? So right. we don't need this part. Of right. The this this was here for us when we got started, but right. I just needed to save that crossbow as a position for debugging stuff. The offset, you guys have already figured this out. I've seen this in a lot of levels where you guys have an offset on your camera that's built by some vectors there. Uh, displaying your health is standard. Displaying a crosshair in the middle of the screen is pretty standard stuff. Um, doing the cam the boom camera with controls with that offset in there. Moving with left stick with strafing. It's really important to use that with strafing option when you're doing a third person shooter like this so that your, uh, your guy is always kind of facing away from the camera rather than kind of spinning in circles. Right. And then these two lines are making your your uh, your character always face the camera direction. It's interesting that they did this, uh, that we've got this set up with uh, the f using the vectors rather than just the turn tile. I'm, I'm sure there's a reason for that. I don't actually know off the top of my head. But the, the real uh, changes that we made are right here. So I, I'm actually gonna disable a couple of these lines that are unnecessary now for the debugging side of things so we can hide those spheres and I don't want to draw this anymore. I don't want to draw either of these. So this is actually completely unnecessary now, so we'll get rid of that. Yeah. And I might as well just get rid of this so I can right. show you the simple bit. Absolutely. Simple bits of it. So when you simplify it, really what we did is we're gonna raycast on the parent of our shoot line. So raycast from camera position in direction, camera forward. So what that's doing is wherever your camera's at, kind of think uh, if there was a guy following your character around with a camera, it's like wherever his camera is at. Um, we're gonna shoot this like tripwire out from that position out into the world and whatever wherever it hits That's gonna give us our hit position, right? So then when you pull the right trigger press the X button it shoots with all these parameters about how the, the Projectile behaves, but it's gonna shoot at that hit position to make sure that your shots are always Specifically hitting what your your uh, crosshair is pointed at so kind of kind of just a, a really simple kind of subtle thing That'll just make your shooting feel a lot better in uh, in your games out there, right? Absolutely. Um we're shooting at speed 50. That's about as that's the max speed I think you can shoot at. So that's interesting. It feels pretty it feels pretty accurate the the impact positions. One of the things you guys might notice, um, especially when you get really close here, is you see see what's happening is my shots are actually bouncing off of the crate, and then because in that first uh, between the frame that they're shot and the frame that they kind of detonate, they are the the physics is causing them to hit the crate and then bounce and then they're kind of like off to the right there a good bit right. and if I adjust my angle over here now they'll be off to the left they kind of bounce off you can see there they're off to the side from where I impacted so we could we could account for that this will get a little bit more complex than what we've shown so far but uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and keep running with this because I heard you guys wanted to see more complex things All right so we could yeah so while you go. How about you go keep moving for yeah. fixing the bump stuff? And if you guys want to see any other complex stuff, feel free to toss up some suggestions. Yeah, yeah. Throw things into the comments there if you've got different stuff you want to see. Right. If that, if you if there's this like man, I can't really figure out how to blah blah blah. 
right? That one thing that's been giving oh, you. Oh, I've got a list of things I can't figure out. How yeah, to I know, on. but Mike, I mean, There's I can't no tell you how to turn work. the camera. I can't hold your hand <laughs> the whole way. I don't. How do I use this controller? How do I turn on my Xbox? Uh, probably, I probably only need one old position. A lot of people we'll have trouble turning on their Xbox. That's the thing. When we get Don't a chance, make fun of that. I, I wasn't making fun of that. I'm serious. The only time it turns on is when I talk about it. Because somehow I say Xbox something on and then it turns on. And I'm like, well, it's really embarrassing. Right? Because um, Xbox always turned on when I talk about it. Boom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. What's worse is you're doing a stream and you're just like, oh, you know, man, the last thing I'd hate to have happen is the Xbox to turn off. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. <laughs> Fortunately, we're on PC here, so we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. You know, I was really disappointed when I realized in our, our studio here we didn't have um, a PA or a speaker system because I totally wanted to just go and make some random announcements and troll everybody. Probably would have set back development for weeks, but damn, it would have been funny. No, that's much. All right. Oh, please don't. <laughs> okay, so we're not supposed to talk about the X word and the off word together in stream. Yeah, I know. That's exactly what I was doing. Okay. Oh, one too many. Okay. Can you turn reverse public gravity? I did not understand that. <laughs> I think global gravity. Could you reverse it? In, invert global example? gravity? Yeah, invert global gravity. Hmm. We could turn gravity to zero, and then we could push all objects up. Yeah. That's probably how I would do it. We can take a look at that in a minute. Um, you could just add every object to a list that you that is in the whole game. If it's an object, add it to the list. Yeah. All the objects get I mean, there's, there's actually a native all objects list. It's a little, oh, really? it's oh, a little okay. bit dangerous to mess with because there's going to be a lot of objects that you probably wouldn't want to push up that are kind of like static things like fences or whatever. Right. But uh, anything that's tumbling or characters you'd want to push up. So it might be a little better to manage your own list. So that would be a little more performant. Yeah. But you could use the all objects list. Let's try to see if we can do that in less than five tiles after we're done with this. Uh, I think we can do five it. lines? Maybe. Tiles? Not likely. Really? Then you don't think so? Like, all you do is disable gravity, right? And then yeah. push it up. I'll push. Yeah, we actually we might be able to do it in like three tiles. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay, okay. After we're done with this, let's uh, go. Let's go. With let me let me finish this uh, this For impact sure. stuff. So we're gonna use some ray casting again here. Um, now let me just walk you through what I've done so far. So I've got this uh, custom vector variable that I'm calling old position, and when I start, it'll the first value old position will have will be at that crossbow position, and right now I'm in the brain of my arrow. So the arrows will start off referencing the position of the crossbow that shot them, and then uh, every at the end of my brain, every time it runs, every time it loops through the brain, it'll update old position to be at its position. But then by the next time the brain runs, its position will be different. And so there will always be this kind of a position that the... I should, let me think about this. I could maybe shoot the arrow really slowly and show you a little bit of how this works in slow motion or turn time factor down or something. And Zach, we get a chance, we should probably have you do your U-shaped uh, hill demo. <laughs> no, Just absolutely. for all the new folks in, in the stream. For sure. I think Jared does a mean U-shaped hill. Uh, yeah, but it's but been a while. I'm kind of rusty. Oh, then maybe we'll have Jared do it. Why did I say that? Um, <laughs> let's draw this. I mean, we, this is going to be moving really quickly, so this will be a little harder to demonstrate what's going on. I'll have to kind of talk through it in principle. Um, that would be good. And then we're just going to play, hmm, this might not entirely work. We're going to have to test this and see if it does what I think it's going to do. That's what I like to do. At position, and then we're going to use that same hip position output. So in principle, the theory here, it's probably not going to work, but <laughs> is that we our old position is always going to be kind of where we were last time the brain ran, so that uh, we can do a ray cast, a tripwire, between our last position and our new position and detect if there's anything that we hit in that interval. Um, and this is really useful for a couple different things. It'll give us more accurate hit positions to draw our little fireball impact effect, but it will also guarantee that we hit really thin objects. So I, th I, don't, I think I have the thin primitives in here. Let me see if I do. You sure do. Yeah, so let's grab one of these guys and I'll rotate this so I can kind of create like a wall. This is, this is a really common problem in uh, video games that has to do with like uh, bullets that hit paper is kind of how people talk about it. So if you have a bullet, um, it, normally it would be what would might happen here is you could shoot 
through this uh, this wall. I think our physics systems account for this, that you can't pass through things. But I'm not entirely sure. But this will guarantee it, that I can't shoot through this. Because my, my arrow is bouncing off of that. So that's good, at least. Um, you can see some of the, the lines drawing there of the different... Uh, All right, so, so go back to where you're doing that. Yeah. Um, so you see now we have these two lines um, for the stream. Let me just take... Well, actually, we can't do that, huh? So we have two lines when he was firing at it, and it's making an L shape. And one of those, the first line, is our debugger. And the second line is checking, oh, I was there, now I'm here. And it's making sure whenever you see those lines, it checks the whole line. If it hit anything in that line, it says, oh, I should blow up now. Because um, it's moving so fast, it doesn't know if it hits things. Yeah, I also just turned our arrows to, I'm going to try and make them stick into that wall, because that'll, that'll be just be cool. Um, I need to think about this a little bit. So I need to save. I need to save a couple things here. I probably need two old positions. This is fun. <clears throat> I'll start off with the same value. This is gonna, I'm going to cache a couple of my old positions. So I have it going back in history a little bit further. Hmm. I think this will do what I'm thinking it'll do. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, Definitely maybe, Jared. Do you see something that I don't see? <laughs> or do you know what I'm even attempting? I know, I know what you're attempting. You're attempting to make... Uh, old position equal to position that. Yeah, okay. We'll see. I also turned off uh, destroy on impact, so the arrows bounce around now. Interesting. Oh, those are still destructible. That's kind of funny. Okay. I think I think that's pretty good. All right. So. Let's think about this. So we've got our our projectile is always forward, is facing the velocity there. <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. Once I figure out something that works, then I'll explain it to you what worked. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got? What are thinking? How about I do a U-shaped hill demo for okay. the new people? Are there are there new people in here who are a little in over their head now? A little bit. I think that has been successfully demonstrated. It's like I judge the like I have a good system. I judge how many new people we have in the stream by the number of people that say WTF is this. So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so maybe there's some new folks here. So uh, Jared, one of our designers, is kind of going over some advanced brain stuff. Uh, let me give you the quick little info on what you're looking at. So, so what is so Project Spark, Zach? This Project Spark is amazing. Let okay. me get into more details. Tell, tell me more. That doesn't tell me. That doesn't tell me. What so is this it? is a tool that helps anyone uh, make a game, and I'm not lying. Like you could, anyone could make a game in here. I feel very, uh, very strongly that that's true. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of populate what we've been uh, working with here with a woodland forest and maybe a little bit of a uh, moon base. So. Uh, this is like, you can sculpt rivers in here. We're gonna do, let's see, we're gonna change our uh, empty world biome to, let's do moon base. Asteroids. Astero alien asteroids. You can put a moon base on your alien asteroid. That's fair are. enough. So this is a tool uh, that's all about making it so you can create games, any kind of great game you can think of. You can also play other people's games. That they've made, yeah. So here we're kind of populating our area. We can say we want to make a big mountain. Why don't you speed that up? Yeah, why don't we? Get that intensity up too. Yeah, there you go. Bigger mountains. <laughs> so square mountains. Nice job. Big square mountains. So we'll take this guy. Your mountains are funny looking. Your mountains are funny looking. <laughs> um and we can do crazy things. Um, Why don't you put a tunnel in your mountain? Of course. That's what's coming next, man. You you gotta gotta it's like I've done this before. I know. 
It almost, almost like you have. So we'll tunnel. Well, big, big river tunnel. Well done. Okay. This is why the like, there's really there's an undo good. button. Yeah. It's handy. <laughs> when you make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll shrink the scale a little bit for our tunnels to be a little smaller, and we'll do our shape maybe a sphere. That'll probably look better. And we'll tunnel through. Really tiny tunnel. There you go. You're, you're doing something. It's hard to see the reticle at the moment. There we go. Yeah, I remember my first stream too. <laughs> there we go. The thing is, this isn't his first. <laughs> <laughs> he's got no excuse. Of course, he's doing right. a thousand times better than I would. So. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our tunnel. And we can kind of do anything you want, anything you can think of, any shape you can dream of with these, uh, with this so terrain. So what happens? Make. Have you jumped in with the character yet? Uh, well, let so me first show you our wonderful biome brushes. So the cool thing about our biome brushes is not only do they paint Aren't on top of things. Why don't you make that biome brush bigger? They paint all over things. So you'll see you on go. the side, we'll get a rocky cliff. On the bottom, we'll get a nice little green grass. And on top of this cave, we get some nice little roots. And we can, whenever we want, we can use uh, Jared's absolutely lovely. Let's hope it still works. Rain. We can go exploring our little uh, biome. And this is kind of the real cool thing, is that you, you do all this arrows. real real quick building, and immediately you can jump in and run around in it. And anybody who has any experience developing knows that usually it's you got to wait for the build to run, and, uh, and it's a whole time to, to compile. And so it's really cool to have that quick iteration and just sort of have fun. Hey, what happens if you do this? And then horrible, unexpected things happen. Right. So like now, unfortunately, our crossbow, our arrows now hit our crossbow and it's decided to revolt against it and start blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, so let me pop out here and Jared, uh, nope, no, not like that. Okay. <laughs> here you go. So should I should I go back into the, oh, the yeah. crazy, crazy stuff do. I was doing? Okay. So I'm trying. What I'm what I'm trying to do is get these crossbow bolts to stick into the object that they hit at the position that they hit, um, and to make that look good. Right. So. I'm gonna set up to when my crossbow bolts hit something, they'll change pages, and then I'll do some stuff on that page to kind of freeze them in place. Um, all right. So, I mean, let's uh, let's do this in the simplest fashion possible first, and then we'll show you some kind of ways you can improve it. Right. So, I'm gonna kind of stop my brain from finishing everything I've written here. This is kind of a nifty uh, thing you can do. I do all the time when I have some kind of lines of. Uh, I'm in the brain editor here, if you didn't know. This is where you can kind of control the behaviors of different objects and stuff. And so right now I'm in the brain of my crossbow bolt arrow, and I'm going to kind of customize how it behaves. But I was working on some stuff that wasn't quite doing what I wanted it to do, so I'm just going to kind of stop that from happening. So what's going to happen is it's going to run rules one through four, get to number five here, and then just stop at that point and, and not even do, run the rest of them. So this kind of lets me ignore that stuff and come back to it later when I'm ready for it. Right. Um, See, we're going to say when we bump into anything, uh, we're going to switch pages in our brain. Switch page. We'll just go to page two. And then we'll toggle over with the shoulder button over here to page two. And then we're going to save out a couple things right as we get in here. We'll save our position and our forward. Right. So there goes the controller on the ground. <laughs> um, We'll call this uh, freeze position. Oh, I need to create a new variable. You to do, do that. you do, sir. I think I was ready to do that, but then the controller dropped. Freeze position. Oh, and that was a number. Bad idea, Jared. <laughs> so, what's the difference between a number and a vector? Um, a vector is three numbers. It's kind of those uh, x, y, and z coordinates. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a nifty way to kind of hold three numbers together, and then you can do a bunch of things with vectors that you can't do with numbers. Um, so this is going to equal the position we were at. So what happens is we, we bump something and then immediately switch to page two. And then uh, as soon as we get in here into page two right away, just on the first time we're in page two, the first frame here, we'll save our position into freeze position. And we'll save our forward into what I'm going to call freeze forward. Right. So in English, that means as soon as I hit this thing, remember where I was when I hit it and what direction I was facing when I hit it. Yep. And I'm also going to kill our velocity so that we the physics engine stops trying to run on this guy. Physics. There it is. Velocity equals 
zero. So that'll that'll kind of stop that from running. Right. Actually, I could do that every frame. I don't want our our velocity to ever be anything more than zero. Right. And then let me copy these two lines, and then I'll just kind of reverse them down here. forward. So right. this is going to remember our position and our orientation, set our, and then every frame it'll set our velocity to zero and our position to equal the freeze position and our forward to equal the freeze forward. And because I've set up the uh, brain of my character to shoot and bounce on impact, it, it's not going to destroy my arrows when I'm shooting. So that's why you saw them bouncing all over the place doing crazy stuff. Right. So let's see if this kind of does what we want. So they're still getting destroyed. Yeah, this over time. Have the shoot timer or the shoot frame on them, right? Let's let's go take a look. Uh, what's, what might be causing that? Right. Launch frequency at speed lifetime one. Hmm. We say lifetime infinite. That'd probably be terrible. <laughs> all right. Let's look at all our parameters. We got in direction, pitch, blah 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 blah. With damage, without hit reaction. Bounce on impact. Collateral with the launcher. Hmm. Well, we could uh, we can do something kind of really interesting here if we want to. I've done this before. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this the most because this is kind of we're going to work around the system a good bit. Oh, good. And do some weird stuff. So it looks like our lifetime property is causing our arrows to always get destroyed no matter what we do. So to get around that, um, we're gonna we're not going to shoot our arrows. We're going to shoot a dummy logic cube here that's invisible. So this little cube is invisible and has no collision and destroys itself as soon as it gets created. So I just put a little destroy tile in it. So we're going to, hmm, shoot, instead of that cross pool, we're going to shoot that uh, logic cube. Okay. And then this crossbow bolt. Hmm. This is getting really complex. So I, I getting very complex. <laughs> so Jack didn't know what he was getting into when he asked me to, to do this here. Okay, create the crossbow bolt. So what's going to happen is our character shoots this this cube. This cube creates the crossbow bolt, and then the cube destroys itself. Uh, but right now our our arrows aren't going to move because they're not using any of the normal shoot functionality that kind of takes care of a lot of this for us. So we're going to have to rebuild that manually if we want to do all this. So that's why I say I don't know if this is really the best idea to go, to go about it like I'm doing right now. But uh, it's kind of fun to like rebuild things from scratch and kind of figure out some, how things work under the hood. You could um, just, oh, well, what are you planning to do? This is what I would do from here. Right. So I need to save a direction to shoot in because uh, right now we were shooting at the impact position of this uh, of our ray cast here. Which is fine. Yeah. So, but I need, I need to save that as a, as a direction <laughs> instead. You could copy the forward and the velocity of the logic cube as well. That, that would work. But okay. I've already started doing it this way. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Far uh, be it from me, good sir. Yeah. All right, I need my crossbow position. So this is where I'm going I'm to calculate a direction based on the position of a couple objects. Um, OK, so I need the hit position minus my crossbow position to give me a direction. So that's drawing a line from your crossbow to the place you want to hit. And you say, oh, well, if I draw these two lines together, this gives me a direction, like this. Yeah. You guys might remember, if this is this is about doing some vector math here. That's, it's, it's somewhat simple vector math, but what this, what this all does is it, it just gives me a direction that points from my crossbow to the hit position of this raycast. So then I have this shoot direction here calculated, and then I make it a normal so that it's a, it's a kind of a finite length. It's specifically a length of one, so I'm not getting like a really long direction. I just want a really simple simple length of one vector to work with in the future math. <laughs> so that might be diving a little too deep. Yeah, yeah, too <laughs> deep. Hey, Zach, Zach's telling me I'm going too far. This is too far. <laughs> so let me tell you about normal. So right. here's the thing. You take your finger, or you take your hand like this, and you get the dot product, but <laughs> <laughs> let's skip all that. So then I can say in my arrow to move with flying in direction, 
normal. Or in, in that shoot direction there. Okay. So that, that just causes me to fly kind of in that direction that we calculated before. Which should do, this should pretty much do what we were already seeing, but uh, it won't destroy itself now. That's, that's in theory. I think we've got it all set up. Oh, it looks like uh, something, why did that, oh, my, this logic cube's not a template. That's what was going on. That is, that is the problem. Make that a template so I can, because it destroyed itself once and then oh, it was yes, gone. I forgot to mention. By exploring, playing, All right, and they don't want to move. They just want to freeze in space. So it's not working as expected. I think a couple things that I, I realize I need to do here. Um, well, let's let's go let's let's go back and not do it quite as complex of a method as this. I might come back and, and mess with this in my spare time and then share out a version of the level that does all this crazy stuff. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of that weird logic cube step and just shoot the, the arrow as before, and then I'll just make its lifetime really long. What a good idea. No, what, what Zach <laughs> said from the beginning. What? <laughs> All right. So we're going to and then change the lifetime and make this something really large. So basically, my arrows will never destroy themselves. At least they shouldn't now. And then my arrows have got a little too much going on in their brain here. Let's just move that back down below. To where the ignore line is? Below, below the ignore line so that it's not going to do anything. So they should switch to page two and then do this freeze thingy. So let's take a look at that. So yeah. it's kind of doing what, what we want it to do, but not quite. Pretty darn close. Because uh, they're shooting and they're freezing in place, but they're, they're kind of not actually in the hit position that we want because they're bouncing off and then freezing. Right. So that's, that's what we were actually trying to talk about is how, how do you fix that? And that's what I started doing with this ray casting stuff down here. So. This should be pretty simple to do. Yeah, how about you just store the direction that they were fired in and keep the, their direction always that for reframes? Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I should need I should need my old position. I should still need these two positions. Old position, old position two, don't you think? No, you could just calculate uh, when they're fired, the position, the... The thing normal. is, the frame after they bump, they've already bounced. So you're going to get the direction from the before they bounce to where they are after they bounce. Only take the direction when they're created. When they're first created, take the direction. That's, that's, that's smart because they're they're not arcing. So if these were arcing projectiles, then you couldn't do that. But since they are they don't arc, we can cache our initial uh, velocity. So here's a suggestion. Why don't we have a collider hit as the event to freeze them? We do, but it's it doesn't it just responds a little too late for us because they're moving so fast. So by oh. the time we realize we've hit something, we've already bounced off of it, and we're not in the position we want to be anymore. So gotcha. we need to we need to kind of keep track. Computers of are incredibly fast, but a little simple. So you tell them to do things, they don't always know when to execute it. Okay. I still I still need this old position stuff. I think. If you say so. <laughs> I should have deleted that line. Crossbow. I have to admit, we are not stealing ideas from the community, but we are impressed by them. I've seen so many amazing levels. I steal ideas from the <laughs> <laughs> Mike can't make anything, don't worry. Um, yeah, I mean, just the stuff that... I have to admit, at first, uh, when stuff was coming out, everyone was saying, like, wow, I'm so impressed with what's coming out. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> now I'm like, whoa, I can't... And everyone's like, I can't imagine where it's going. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And now I'm just like, and now you just look at what people are creating in the game, and it's just insane. Someone's having like a full, well, not a full scale, but a really big scale Westeros from Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. And that's super impressive. Okay. And there's so many of these impressive levels. Okay. So now we're going to, we're going to, what are we going to do? Because <laughs> now I don't understand the old position. So, because we need to, we need to uh, know the actual position that our arrow hit the uh, the crate at. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is our old position is where we were last frame yes. before we bounced off right. the crate. So once we bounce, we need to know we need to raycast from our old position in the direction we were moving. 
so why are we switching a page instead of freezing immediately? Isn't that going to We could freeze like immediately, but it's a little easier to manage because then I would have to stop running all this other all these other lines. So just kind of easily like discard all that stuff I was doing and now just freeze me. And that's all we need to do there. So direction and then we're going to do in the shooting direction. Okay. Yeah. And then you're going to get a bounce like this. Okay. There goes the controller again. Get that output for the hit position. So we're always ray casting from our old position in the shoot direction, and that's always giving us hit position. And then, so this will this will always be saved. And then by the time we get to the next page, freeze position instead of being the position where we've already bounced, we're just going to change that to hit position, and we'll change the forward that we lock the like orientation that we lock to to be our shoot direction. So just with these two little changes, that should behave a little bit better. Let's hope. Yep. There you go. Much better. Yeah. So it looks like the arrows can actually shoot each other, which that's kind of interesting. You might want to do some logic to ignore that so you can't just, it's going to be kind of funny if I just shoot at the same position over and over. Yeah. They kind of stack up with each other. Right. But, I mean, you could kind of understand they're like splitting into the back of each other a little bit. It's totally what it looks like too. You're right. No, that's really good. So there you go. They're all they're all kind of sticking into the, the crate a little bit more precisely than they were before. This works uh, really well with the arrows because their position is in the middle of the arrow, whereas it looks like the crossbow bolt's position is at the front of the arrow. So let me let me see if I can get away with the swap mesh here and show you what that looks like. Good luck. <laughs> swap mesh can be a little finicky. After this, I want to make a anti-gravity generator. All right. Well, after the arrow switch, then we'll take a look at the anti-gravity. I bet we can make an object that if you interact with it, it'll turn on anti-gravity. Well, it looks like you guys are doing the same thing. I bet our crate uh, collision detection is a little bit bigger than our visual yep. mesh here. I would believe that's probably And nice. it looks like they don't actually work with uh, hitting the ground, which is kind of interesting. Oh, I'm surprised they do damage. Yeah. Oh, it's because you shield. Yeah. But this will work with any object, so you can shoot it into rocks and a bunch of different things. So kind of some interesting stuff there. Hopefully that gives you a few principles of how you can kind of use uh, ray casting in some interesting ways. And what, what's really fun with this is you could make these arrows so that you can like pick them back up and make an ammo system out of this so that you have like, you're retrieving your arrows, maybe give them a random chance to break or some cool stuff like that. Yep. Uh, but yeah, let's go to anti-gravity now. Okay. Let's should we do it in the same level? Absolutely. All right. We should put some tumbling rocks in the world so we can kind of see how it works. Okay. I think we definitely need- And some Kodian, other characters. We need a Cody and a uh, heads up display. A Cody and heads up display. I don't know what we call them. Uh, let's put some aliens in this world if we're going to do anti-gravity. Zombies. Where's the Codian at? Where's the Codian at? Codian Scout. Okay. Put some aliens out here. Okay. And maybe I want to do some, make this guy an astronaut. So let's go into the carriage studio really quick and let's get that set up. Swap out these pieces. That looks kind of funny. Oh, I need to confirm those changes. You tried to do the champion pose. That's what go. I wanted. So what do you think an astrotech would mean? I mean, an, an astrotech, the literal translation, would be your engineering planets. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right? Yeah, sure. So it's very it's fitting. A, he's an astro astronomy technician. Ah, that's what yes, it is. right. Maybe. The astronomy tech, and therefore he sculpts gravity with his tools, right? Yeah, it only makes sense. Hold on, I'm bringing up the Oxford English Dictionary here. I'm going to see see what what the real de deal is here. Okay, so I would say all objects. It's even even simpler. Really, push all objects up. You can do it with three tiles. Yep. Oh my God. It's going to be probably be a little bit too strong, so we might have to put in a strength on it. Yeah, yeah. And I want to get some world relative directions. World up. Okay. And now, but we also have to make it so gravity doesn't exist. Which I don't know if you can do that through world properties. Let's oh, take really? A look. You might have to do it per object. Nope, there it is. So world, world gravity. gravity factor. So we'll make this zero. Okay. And let's do a Boolean. So world gravity factor was one. How about we make it so it's normally one, and when you interact with this thing, it's now it's negative one. I don't know if we actually have world gravity factor. No, available no. But we can do push all objects. Oh, that's a good idea. 
Okay. Look at this guy. Thinker. So maybe maybe when I like tap a shoulder button, we'll toggle it. Uh, I wanted it to be a Codian thing, like I was saying. Like, bam. Like what? Like a little uh, Codian. Uh, like a thing you interact with? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you go interact with like a generator. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't, let's see if I have any, any props that work like that. So swap mesh on this logic cube. Let's make it something real. For sure. I think with. Maybe I can just, I could just use the blaster or something. So the origin is from the Greek word astron, star, and the OED explains it as relating to the stars or celestial objects. There you go. See? Sculpting around stars. That definitely takes gravity. All right, so I'm just scaled up my Codium Blaster, and now this will be my terminal to uh, turn off, turn gravity, reverse it, or whatever. Okay. Cool. Um, so it has power. Yeah, when it has power, which I think is in brains, power, there we go. So when has power, push everything up. Otherwise, we'll push everything down. You're looking for else, right? Nope. And when we interact with it, we'll toggle its power. So where is, where is interact these uh, days? It's on the keyboard, if you were to ask me. <laughs> You're going to search for it. That's, that's cheating. <laughs> it used to be in objects. There it is. Interacted. OK. And toggle. Where's toggle? Toggle is one of my favorite tiles, I have to say. Where's it? It makes things. Uh, I think it's under logic. So that doesn't get out much. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, though, toggle is one of the best tiles. Why, why, why is toggle so great? So toggle is very great because it saves a lot of uh, huh, it's in state. math. Interesting. Oh, okay. It saves a lot of state switching. It saves a lot of time. If you just toggle, then you have to have power. Yeah. yeah, so when interacted, toggle has power. When has power, push everything up. Otherwise, push everything down. Well, it's still up. Oh, good call. Always push up. Nope, that's not what we want. Push down. Okay. And we can do some fancy things with this that I might do with my character in a little bit to make him kind of orient based on uh, what where he's getting pushed. But that might be complex to do. We'll see. Um, let's put some rocks in here to make it really cool. Absolutely. And so if we wanted this to not work on an object, just so you know guys, at any point we could make it so these objects cannot be moved. Like these trees, I believe. Yeah, none of the trees cannot will, be will moved. work because all their roots are stuck in the ground, you know, but they're all, the way that's done is they're all fixed physics types. Like this rock by default is also fixed. So we want him to be able to tumble around, so we'll change him to a tumbling rock. All right. Let's just create a few of these. Out so anything that's not nailed down is about to go on a ride. That's what's supposed to happen. OK, let's see what happens. So I can still, my character can still run around. Whoa, OK. <laughs> and we're all going to die when we hit the end, edge of the world. So let's, let's not do that. <laughs> let's. Uh, Let's put some objects out there. I think this is a job for thin primitives, sir. Okay, fine. I got. I got a. Okay, put like a ceiling on our world, so if we're like inside a space station or something. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm gonna. It'd be great. I should make another terminal. That's like up here. Yeah. Good idea. Now so that's thinking. So that's that I can thinking switch ahead. Switch it back and forth. You're right. Put it up on the higher one. All right. But now I don't want two objects that are both trying to control gravity. So I just want this one to have a to to toggle power on the other guy when he's interacted with. Which is why toggle is so amazing. Okay. So he's not going to worry about pushing things around. So toggle insert, and we can point to the other object's power in this frame. We should be able to. I don't know if it's actually going to. It's totally going to light. I don't know. Look at that. I don't have an uh, in-world picker. Uh, because it's before toggle, yeah. I guess toggle doesn't like doing that. So we no, have to do you it. You have to do it before toggle. Oh, look at this guy. He knows more than I do. I know. It's like I play the game more. <laughs> no, no. I just don't use toggle that much. It's not my, it's not my it's favorite title like it is for you. I know, man. Oh, oh wait. Why it did it break doesn't everything? like that. Has power toggle? Instead of toggle has power. 
Nope. nope. It hates it. Okay. Okay. Make this do it a little bit roundabout. This is why toggle is nifty, so that you don't have, normally have to do this. All right. So when this thing. All right. So uh, this is what it looks like when you don't have toggle. All this stuff. So when it has power, other way around. So when interacted, if it already has power, power off. If it doesn't already have power, power on. Okay, that should work. Yep. And let's try this again. Like that's a real thing. A lot so of right now, for command line. I wonder why it's not pushing us around right now. So it should have power. So I guess we're getting pushed down right now. Yeah. We so sure if I go into the water here, I won't be able to get out. Yep. Great. You're never getting out. <laughs> I should I should modify my character to uh, have some like jetpacks or something. Um. Whoa! Oh shoot! Oh, you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Need to move these guys over a little bit so that I actually get caught. There we go. That that should catch me. In theory. Okay. Oh, there we go. Everybody's heads just got split open. Hi guys. And we could easily move the camera around here Oof. and change all these uh, stuff to make Where it kind of a little more pretty. You're, you're I think I might no, have no. still hit the edge of the world. I think you're good. I didn't think you died. Let's move this down a little bit. Yeah, you got it. Okay. So you can see how you could make a, a kind of interesting puzzle game out of gravity manipulation like this. Oh yeah, for sure. Now where? Turn around. Hi there. They're not shooting at me. That's kind of funny. Well, because they're your friends. Codians are friends, dude. There we go. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Oh, did I die again? Did I miss everything? I think I did. Actually, I should be. No, I no, still. No, I think move. you're still there, dude. Yeah, you're just hitting the. Top oh, of my it. head is going yeah, through exactly. the, and then the camera's inside the other object. Right. Okay. Indeed. So if you guys want to see anything else, have any suggestions, let me know. Yeah, what else do you guys want to see? Um, let me think of something I would like to see. Let me think of something that gets... I'm going to make my guy a jetpack guy, just because that's fun. Go for it. So I want you to make your guy a jetpack guy. Oh, really? But when you talk, put on the jetpack, I want it to go to third person. Because nobody flies around in a jetpack first person. So you want it to I normally mean, be known. first person, and then when I go to jetpack, it'll be third person? Right. All right, ah. so I'm just going to swap this guy's brain out then and start with so the third person. Who's actually a really good one. What do you feel is best practices for switching cameras? Um, that depends. Um, Let's say... In this case, yeah. I'm probably going to... Because there's going to be a lot of things that change at once, Yeah. Um, I'll probably do page switching for this and have two, one camera on each page. Interesting. Um, let's go grab that uh, advanced first person brain. And start with that. This is cool. And to show you what this guy's look, this brain looks like by default. So by default, I'm moving around in a first-person point of view here, with a really cool HUD stuff. I can shoot. Um, can still interact with our generator, yes. No. Nope. Yep. There we go. And a we face go. plant up here. This actually looks a little better using this camera. This oh, for sure. Good idea. I think these aliens are on my team right now. Yeah, they are. That's, that's why I can't really shoot them. All right, so let's modify this so that when, maybe when I press A, well, instead of jumping, we will switch pages and go into our jetpack mode. So how would you distill Ooh. down telling someone what a page is? Um, a page is kind of like a set of well, I mean, you first need to know what's going on in your brain normally. So the brain is a kind of a set of rules that determine what your uh, object is going to do. Yeah. It's kind of like, follow these rules, do this stuff. And so then pages are kind of like subsets of rules. So it's like, when you're on a page, it will follow these rules. Then when you change pages, it'll follow a different set of rules. Right. So I'm going to set up, we have our normal set of rules to follow when we're in first person mode. And then we're going to write some new rules to follow when we're in jetpack mode. What page?
page. I'm going to name my page because there's, there's several pages in this brain already. I call this Jetpack. Okay. Switch page to Jetpack. Where's the text? Jetpack. There we go. And then when we're in Jetpack, I'm going to be able to press A to uh, switch back to whatever that main page was, which I forget what it was called. So it was called main. One. Oh, or I could do one. Yeah, one's probably simple. Switch page one. Okay. And now there's a few things going on on main that I want to also do on that page. Like I want to be able to, I don't need to do init, I don't think, because that's just a beginning stuff. But I still want to do all the HUD stuff. So the HUD page is, uh, these are all the rules on, ah, interesting. It looks like the camera's in the HUD page. I don't like that. I don't want that to be in here. So I'm going to move that out of the HUD page and put that on main. I actually, I've never actually messed around with this brain too much, so I might break everything. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, it uh, certainly looks like what you're doing. <laughs> Let's see if this just works from here. So when I press A, whoa, oh, that's creepy. Yep. <laughs> pretty weird, pretty quick. Let's uh, let's put our third person camera on, so we at least can see what that's doing. Go set up a follow camera here. Okay. So when I press A, we'll go to the follow camera, so I can toggle between cameras. All right. So this is in his head, and this is the follow camera. I can press A to go back and forth between those two. Okay. That 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 works. That works surprisingly well. And then. What else do I need to be able to do while I'm in jetpack mode? Well, I don't think the HUD's making a lot of sense in third person. Yeah, it doesn't look it. quite right. So I'll have to disable some more pieces of the HUD. But I want to get my movement stuff set up yeah. first. So left stick move. Obviously. Yeah. Always a good one. Always. Classic. Left stick move. Then, um, actually, maybe I'll put it on the triggers to go up and down. Right trigger up, left trigger down. That sound good? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're not in space, though, right? So jetpacks usually only move you up. So we only really need up. Right, you're but you're possibly got... being pushed up and down. So you're always going to be affected by gravity. That's true. Up to you. OK. I like the way you think. You can set that up to move with flying. Move with flying might be enough. Yeah, I'm gonna get it will be, for sure. I'm going to get pushed around a lot. Oh, yeah. So let's see if that works and does what I want. Do -do -do -do. All right, so I press A to go into this mode, and then I can move with flying, but I can't go up because the, I'm getting pushed down constantly. So that's that's where I need I need some way to fight that, to fight the, the getting pushed down. So that's where I think I'm going to put something on a trigger. I haven't exactly decided what I'm going to do. Let's, uh, let's look at the power state of that one object. Of our of our gravity generator, right? So if it's pushing you down, this is going to push you up. If it's pushing right. you, right, will push us up, in the it's opposite going to direction. push you down. Yep, exactly. So when it has power, I forget what direction it's going on. I think it has power. It's pushing us up, up. So we need to push ourselves down. Right. Interesting pack constantly working against gravity, but I guess... Direction. Just as long as you pull the trigger. Yeah. Um, pull it down, and then we'll inverse that for when it doesn't. Hold up. Awesome. And then we got to make this look cool. So when you're in jetpack mode, got to add some effects here. Of course. Not creation. How about, right? yeah, yeah, let's uh, draw a sphere. No, I got an idea. Okay. I know what I'm doing here. I'm I've sorry. done this before. Okay, okay. <laughs> Jetpacks are that Far cool. be it from me. Going for the flame emitter, good sir? No, fireball. <laughs> Trying to remember where sockets are at. Because you can reference Player. socket positions. No. There it is. Ah. Oh, this will be nice. Now 
And now we need to make them a little bit smaller than default. Scale. Whoa, lots of numbers in here. Yeah, 0.25 would be pretty good. Okay, that looked pretty cool. Okay, so we got our normal first person shooter mode here. And then I can switch into my jetpack mode where I've got some fireballs on my feet. And I should, it looks like looks like I'm not moving up yep, fast yep. enough. Right. Like I'm, the gravity is too strong. So let's go in and make myself move faster when I pull the right trigger. So like at speed three or something? Yeah. Like. Or times. Wait, could you do a direction times? Yeah, you could. Why? Why not? Why not? That might be enough. Okay. Doesn't seem to be. Oh, oh yeah. I can just point the camera up and there now I can go. fly around. So there you go. Perfect. So now I'm flying around in this game. All right, let's go interact with that thing and make everybody else go flying up to the ceiling. Let's do it. Oh, I don't actually have interact set up on this page, so I have to switch back to first person to interact. It's okay. It's very uh, minute work, dexterous work. Making you fly oh, down. Oh, go down, go down. No, don't go out to the oh, edge of the trigger. level. No. Gonna trigger, yo. No, no. It's got me. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why that didn't work. Anyway, you guys get the idea. We've got some, some gravity stuff switching around here and some. Uh, oh, I, oh, no, I have it set up to fly a little, little down. Hmm. When right trigger, hmm, I don't know what was going on there. Yeah, me neither. Very strange. I might need to say with flying on these guys. That may be part of what's what's kind of throwing it off. So this is actually something that maybe you could tell me. What's that? Interesting to me. Um, so how would you turn this guy upside down? The sky? Gravity? No, no, this guy. Oh, just our main character. This guy. The, the sky. sky or this guy? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> Our main character. Um, I'd probably I put it in this HUD display just as kind of a hack, but um, hmm. I could do it absolutely. Like I could make his. I could just flip him as soon as the uh, the gravity of the world is flipped. Yeah, it sounds or like a good idea. That would be that'd be kind of a quick snap and might be. A little bit jarring. You could but yaw him towards that direction. That way, right. You could rotate him more slowly, or you could set his uh, his up based on your velocity, so it's like opposite of your velocity. I don't know if that would actually work. Yeah, me either. But that'd be amazing if it did. I sure. would be truly impressed. Should we try that? Sure. Someone who's writing code, Kyle, is like, "What are you doing, you fool?" But that's gonna that's gonna make him when I'm flying around. He's gonna like orient the opposite of the direction we're flying. So that's gonna that should weird. be good. But it'll be like it'll look like he's flying backwards all the time. No, it'll look like he's flying away from his feet that are on fire, which is good. Right? I think it'll look like he's flying into his feet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um let's just do let's just do the snap method first, because that's pretty straightforward. This is this is how we get things done here. We just talk about them. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> And like the thing is, tiles are spread out over so many people, right? That uh -huh. like, if uh, if we had our devs in here, it'd be like, wait, how did uh, how did he do that? I don't know. Maybe it would it'd work like this. So when it has power is when gravity is reversed. So we're gonna set our up to equal world down. You can just grab your local up. Yep. And assign it to something else. That that is impressive. That is a, and I don't know if everyone will understand why that's impressive, but I find that <laughs> impressive. Uh, it was rolled up both times. You're gonna Dang it. I always forget that stuff. <laughs> always forget the stuff to make it work. I have all the logic. Yeah, rolled up, rolled down, you got it. Roll down. Is that it? That's what I want? Yeah, let's try it. Sounds great. Okay. So by default, everything's looking good. 
Ugh. Well, Something. that almost worked, except you got tossed right into the terrain. Oh, yeah. I just got flipped into the terrain. That's funny. Yep. Boom. Okay. Coding blaster. We should just we should delay that a little bit. That Maybe just a little bit. Countdown timer. Can you do that? Yeah, if it has power for more than, let's say, point whatever seconds. Yeah. I think half a second. Would yeah. Be. There we go. That is a quarter. Whatever, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> now they're both well down. Why you, got, why you gotta remind me of these things? I don't know, I don't know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I want you to succeed, it's gotta be rough. So what happened there is when we flipped our guy's orientation, yeah. we like stuck his head into the ground because we rotated him around his feet, so we just stuffed him into the ground and then he got stuck inside the ground. Right. So what this'll do is it'll let, after the, the thing starts to have power, it'll wait a little bit and then flip our guy so that it's, uh, our guy has a chance to fall before he gets moved around. Right. So when he In flips, theory, we're about to find out. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. We didn't invert the controls at all, did we? But oh gosh. Yeah. No. That feels really <laughs> weird. Uh, forwards is backwards, backwards is forwards. Left and right are still okay. Oh good. Good, good, good. Okay. Oh wow. Oh, that's trippy. Yeah. Look I at like that. that. So this works with first person cameras when you put them in an object that uh that is upside down, it actually inverts the camera upside down. So this this is kind of crazy. But yeah, the controls are backwards, so I'd have to I'd have to think about how to fix that. Alright, can I can I find my way to back to the switch and my drunken stupor here? There we go. Yeah. Oh, but you got am I stuck inside You got stuck inside. Indeed. How did that work? I don't know. Now I'm inside the the other cube up here. It's true. It should have had a delay on that too. Hmm. It should have, right? Yeah. Why did it not have a countdown? It was just not long enough? Maybe. Make it half a second. Pretty crazy stuff here. I wasn't expecting to build all this on stream today. <laughs> Whoa. Oh okay. my god. I get I feel bad for you just having to move around in that. Uh, like my no no. Is this no, the right side? Oh, no, no, wrong corner. No. I understand why you're confused. To your left. <laughs> so turn right. Over there? <laughs> yeah. Over here. Oh, right, but right and left aren't reversed. Oh, God. Oh, why is it not there? Oh, I'm so confused. Where is it? There, there it is. is. Okay. It helped that these things weren't the exact same color. Yeah, and if you could... See, wait, you ended up on the other one? How'd that even... Oh, my God. Yeah, I just fell, I fell down further. Or fell up further. Yeah, you fell <laughs> up... <laughs> fell up further. Okay, it was... There it the is. Timer. Ah, okay. now we're back. Crazy stuff, guys. Well... Those are some good anti-gravity <laughs> generators. I approve. Good work. These guys are all doing handstands. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I should set them up to flip themselves around, too. Yeah. So it's about 1.15 here, so we're 15 minutes over. Okay. okay. Well, it was fun, guys. Absolutely. So we will be back on Thursday at 3 p.m. PDT, uh, and we will be talking about what? That future pack that hasn't been announced that, that you might really, be, we really will be cool talking one about that, that hasn't leaked at all the dead the We're dead about the dead in project spark the living in the dead no just the dead okay the, the undying so yeah we'll we'll be uh sending more information on that look for a blog tomorrow about the next uh, content pack that should be coming out right with the next update patch which Last I heard may still make this week, but it could be pushed out to Monday, but my info is probably 17 hours old, and that's like an eternity on this team. Uh, in the meantime, just follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Um, also, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel here. Somebody tells me that we should remind people that all the time, so they know when we stream and they get a reminder. So subscribe, and I don't know, Zach probably gets some sort of like, free comment, subscribe. points or something, frequent flyer points. Right. Uh, and... Uh, We'll be back on Thursday, and we'll see you guys then. A man who kept track of these things would notice that uh, the streams have been happening on time for quite a while. So <laughs> look, at look that. forward to more streams, guys. Despite uh, my best we'll efforts to say, good God, we have six minutes, Zach. Why are you rushing me? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, see you guys. See ya. See ya.